happens when we are facing the changes that are uh, really challenging and our system is really tensed against it. How do we work with it then? That'll be the last piece we'll explore tonight. And one of the stories that um, has struck me over the years, and this, this I was leading a weekend retreat, uh, oh gosh, it's probably about 10 years ago, and a woman uh, came and her husband was dying and he had actually wanted her to come to the weekend um, just to kind of help her find some support and resources and centering because it, he had decide, they decided together they weren't going to have a priest come and that he really wanted her to accompany him. So um, towards the end of the weekend she pulled me aside and she said, you know, I am really afraid I'm going to fail him because, you know, this is like the biggest thing I've been ever asked to do. Um, and then she asked me what she could read or study on how to accompany someone who was dying. And, um, and like, you know, dying 101, <laughs> Buddha's dying 101. And I, my basic response is really, um, just offer him your love, just love him. You know? And I did share with her, because um, they were Catholic, that because I had just recently done a weekend, uh, a number of us from different faith traditions presented on compassion. Father Thomas Keating was there and he had um, shared the words, I consent. He said, if you can face things on some level, say to the life that's presented, I consent. It's like, yes, you know, it's like you're opening your, your cells and your heart and your being to the life that's right there. Um, you can find in the midst of things a, a beautiful presence. So I shared those words and, and, and she, that was what she brought home. She was, her intention was to try to open to what was going on and love him well. And she described one evening that he was talking about dying with her and she said, oh, honey, today's been a really good day. Let, let me make you some tea. And as she went to make the tea, everything in her went, oh, I blew it. Because she felt more distance in those moments from having cut him off. Like he, he wanted to talk about dying and she was making it all right, you know. And it was in those moments making tea over the, the tea kettle that she prayed, please, please, may I truly open with presence to what's happening. May I truly love him through this. And, and, and that deepened awareness. She saw her, her vulnerability avoidance strategy, which was staying busy, okay? Trying to make things okay, trying to do things. She was a doer. And um, she saw it and she could feel in her body the distancing because when we create the walls to try to make ourselves safe, we're a million miles from the other and from our own hearts, right? So from that, from that moment on, it was like I consent went to a whole deeper level. It's like the difference between mentally whispering yes to something and having your whole being just truly open to the life that's here. And she said that in that, you know, she would, some, in a, some very deep place, she would consent to the fear she was feeling and to the utter feeling of not knowing and uncertainty and how to, how to work, how to be there for him. And she'd be opening to the, you know, of course, to the, the movement of the grief that was there and whatever came up. And she said, in that consenting, in that yes to the changing movement of life, she said she found she did know how to respond to him. She knew when to be quiet and when to sing softly to him and when to climb into bed and hold him and when to just be a, the kind of the space around him that was very still. She knew intuitively because the reality is that when we stop fighting the river and just become the river, the river knows how to move around rocks and how to be in a spontaneous way. And there's another knowing she had, and this is what she wrote to me. She said, and this was a 
you know, week or so after he died, she said, he's gone, but the field of loving, who we really are, is always with me. What she discovered in that letting her heart break open was that openness that, that knew who they were beyond their forms. And I think those that have um, lost dear ones can sometimes sense how that is, that there's a, a, the profound sorrow of missing the form, but also some deep truth that we're in the field, in this field of love together. That is the gift of opening to impermanence. It's, it's realizing who we are beyond the forms that are changing. Oh.